A very warm welcome to Newsfeed on this 19th day of June 2022, a day that has seen the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition continue its campaigns right here in Nairobi. This afternoon, they're at the Jacaranda Grounds. One of the many stories we've lined up for you on Newsfeed this afternoon. Now, with that said, my name is Denis Otieno. I trust you're doing well. Welcome to the broadcast. Now, on to our top story this afternoon. Garissa Township Member of Parliament Aiden Duale on Sunday hit out at the criminal justice system in the country, accusing it of being used by the state to be partisan and harass political leaders allied to Deputy President William Ruto. Duale, who was reacting to the recent controversy that surrounds the degree of embattled Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja, was quick to add that the use of criminal justice system for actions outside their mandate will be revisited once Kenya Kwanzaa assumes power. the actors of the criminal justice system to parade many leaders before court with no evidence because they were working at the whims of certain shade of the political divide. I want to tell the leadership of the criminal justice system, the DCI, the IG, the DPP, the EACC, and other institutions like the Commission for University Education. Meanwhile, members of the Azimio Moja Coalition Party, who are running for various political seats, have expressed immense concern over the high number of candidates seeking the same seats under the coalition. At a meeting in Ivasha, aspirants from the coalition party gathered to form a lobby group and agreed to hold joint campaigns ahead of the coming elections. Naivasha ODM parliamentary candidate Anthony Rebo outlined that the coalition faced stiff competition from their competitors as a result of the high number of candidates seeking the same seat under the coalition. Anthony Rebo, however, remained optimistic of the idea of securing majority seats by carrying joint campaigns. Aspiring woman representative Eunice Muraithi advocated for team work or rather for team to work for better Naivasha representation in the coalition. A Jubilee official Eric Kichohe, however, warned that the move by various parties in the coalition to front candidates for all seats posed a major threat and could backfire on them. Petition, and that is why we decided to come and uh, try and strengthen and uh, share on how we can ensure that uh, Azimio takes the votes. We have come together as Naivasha leaders today uh, to come and make, uh, constitute a lobby group that will be speaking specifically about Naivasha issues. And more so, uh, trying to come up with a strategy on how we're going to make sure that we win uh, with the Azimio ticket for Baba and Mother. That is our, those are our candidates for, for the presidential uh, seat. And uh, we have to constitute a, a way that we are going to have a good strategy to make sure that we win the election. We know that competition is there and we need to appreciate that and it's a fact. But we can tell and we are confident that we are going to give Baba the majority of, of, of those votes. We've had to deal with issues of uh, the zoning particularly where we find two or three parties within the same coalition running for the same seat. So we are asking to build consensus within ourselves as, and also our party leader and our county captain, who's the governor. The Pamoja African Alliance, PA, has continued with its call that every national leader seeking coast votes do it through a memorandum and not through the traditional promises that has left the region reeling under development. The Power Brigade, led by Magarini Member of Parliament Michael Kingi, told mourners during a burial in Ganda, Malini, Malindi constituency, that it is through these agreements that the region can have a cake at the national level. Adding that even though President Uhuru Kenyatta is supporting ODM presidential flag bearer Mr. Raila Odinga, he did not do it as an individual but did it through his Jubilee political party. <laughs> Mtu yote ambaye anahitaji kura za mpwani tunataka pia yeye tukwe naye na mkataba
ya kwamba tukimpatia kura zetu kama wapwani tuna halo hakikisho kwamba kuna haya haya ambao ni mahitaji ya pwani ataenda kuyatekeleza na haya yote itafanyika kupitiana na chama cha pa kama venye kule mheshimiwa huru kenyata ana chama cha jubili ameka mkata bandani ya azimio pia sisi wa pwani tutasema hakuna kura bila mkataba na no mkataba utapitiana katika chama cha nini cha pa hiyo ndio njia peke yake iteza mkombo wa mpwani nataka niseme sisi wanasiasa ambao tumesimama tunastahili upendo tena mwingi sana kati yetu sisi haijalishi uko chama gani wala chama gani sote tunahitajiana kama binadamu na mimi najua hakuna ajuaye kesho yake hata yangu sijui huenda yule ambaye unamwona adui wako leo ndiye kesho atakuwa kiongozi wako wenzangu waliosimama walikuwa nawakilisha vyama tofauti tofauti mimi ndio nashikilia bendera ya ODM katika Kilifi County na pia nitoe rambe rambe za wao wenzangu wote ambao tumeshirikiana katika kufika katika hafla hii ya kumshirikiza mzee Elsewhere party candidates for Kanu from the two Gusi region counties have appealed for collective unity ahead of the August 9th polls if the area residents want to benefit from the government speaking at Nyamataro in Kisi town the candidates claimed that the unity of purpose in the local community was bad and that it was a high time it was resolved Stephen Nyambane who represented them challenged the community's leaders and the electorate to vote as a block to enable Azimio la Umoja One Kenya Coalition's presidential candidate Raila Odinga win in the first round. So we are here representing a large number of uh, voters Kisi and my wish is to ask especially those ones who are uh, going for governance please may you stop this uh, chaos and everything else so that we can have a peaceful election in Kisi because I am personally appealing for honorable uh, Simbarati honorable Yongo honorable Chris Obure honorable uh, Machau and uh, all those people who are going for governorship and senator and all, all those seats so that we can have peace uh, uh, our party and uh, the national chairman senator Gideon Moy uh, to come to our county so that uh, he joins us in the, in the campaigns to, to promote our party to campaign for the candidates and to campaign for honorable Raira Moro Dinga and we said as, as Kano candidates we will continue to have joint campaigns from time to time to support each other now from politics in Kisi County we head back to Nairobi County where a standoff was witnessed this morning at Jakaranda Grounds Embakasi constituency after anti riot police called off a plan at the venue we booked the East Member of Parliament Babu Owino to avoid clashes between their supporters our reporter Mike Gongo is on standby good afternoon Mike Gongo kindly fill us on the latest happenings at the Jakaranda Grounds Uh, good afternoon uh, uh, Dennis Otieno uh, right uh, I can get you right uh, uh, loud and clear from Jakaranda grounds here in Mbakasi East constituency in Nairobi county and this early morning uh, today uh, anti riot police engaged the residents here who were not at ease after they tried to uh, jet in here we are told that Mbakasi East MP Babu Owino had earlier on booked this ground for his own rally in this constituency uh, but uh, days before Francis Moreidi who is a UDA uh, ticket aspirant in this constituency had also booked these uh, uh, grounds for Kenya Kwanza rally slated for today clashing both sides clashing to get these grounds but anti riot police uh, opted to uh, call off both uh, rallies to maintain or to calm the residents or uh, supporters of both parties who uh, had already jetted in this morning so as we speak now uh, Dennis Otieno you can see if my uh, camera person can pan from my background uh, these are uh, uh, police doing their work they have already uh, nabbed one uh, 
support our first Miola Umoja uh, coalition. Several have been nabbed already and taken into uh, police vehicles where uh, they are waiting maybe to be taken to police custody. Police have already, uh, are so many here in a very big number to make sure that actually uh, there is peace here. All these people you see here are not, most of them are not UDA supporters or Kenya Kwanzaa supporters. Most of them are Azimio La Umoja supporters who do not even want their counterparts or their opponents to hold or to hel uh, hold a, a rally in these uh, grounds today. So earlier on, uh, this role you can see here, uh, the truck belongs to Kenya Kwanzaa's bottom up. Uh, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. Now, it was down there uh, like about 20 minutes ago. Then it was playing music. Uh, from nowhere, we just realized that uh, Azimio La Umoja supporters were not at ease and they were not, they didn't want them actually to play music here. So they opted to uh, pelt stones on them. Uh, and I hear that one person, one supporter has been injured and actually has been taken to hospital. Police are trying to calm the issue here, uh, trying to call people into order. Uh, what we understand is that Deputy President William Ruto had earlier on maintained through his tweet that he will still be on. He will still come over to these grounds to make sure that uh, he will uh, hold a rally for Kenya Kwanzaa. Currently, we understand that they had been in church, in a church service at Roy Sambo constituency, where after some times they will be jetting here. We, were, we will see if they will be able to uh, to hold this rally here today, or police will still maintain that uh, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, coalition rally will be uh, called off. Earlier on I spoke to uh, uh, Babu Owino who said that he had already called off this uh, meeting uh, but uh, he was at Kasarani for uh, Zimiola Umoja coalition, uh, another rally there or another meeting there for uh, political. So what you can see uh, those are uh, stones uh, supporters of both sides engaging trying to, but police are also trying to calm them down. So any time from now you can see the police are now uh, uh, Dennis Otieno, as you can see police have already uh, started uh, uh, releasing tear gas canisters. So any time from now this field will be actually engaged between police officers and uh, Azimio La Umoja supporters. Who doesn't want Kenya Kwanzaa uh, uh, supporters to hold their rally here as at now? So, as you can see, uh, police and uh, Azimio La Umoja supporters are engaged, engaging in stones and uh, uh, tear gas canisters here and there. So, we are still waiting here. We'll be bringing uh, everything to our viewers to show, to showcase on what is happening and actually to see what unfolds if at all Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade will be jetting here after some few minutes. So, we understand that two or three uh, supporters of Azimio La Umoja have been nabbed by police and uh, they are in uh, police custody, uh, police vehicles here whereby we will be waiting to see or uh, to understand uh, to or what will be unfolding if they'll be taken to police custody or what happens after uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, Brigade arrives here. I understand that uh, uh, Francis Muraithi, I was told Francis Muraithi was here, who is a UDA aspirant candidate for uh, Embakasi East constituency. So he is the one who had booked this uh, ground about one week ago and after seeing uh, Kenya Kwanzaa booking this uh, uh, he claims that after seeing he himself booking this ground, uh, Babu Owino now came to book for a attention, to seek attention, what we don't even understand, uh, why should he seek an attention to make sure that he books these uh, grounds to counterpart his opponents. So we are uh, still here at these grounds to uh, see or to see what unfolds after police have already engaged with the supporters here and there uh, and we'll be bringing you up to date on what happens uh, in the course of the day and uh, actually in our subsequent uh, bulletins at 7 and 9. Back to you, Dennis Otieno, maybe my camera person can uh, 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 pan around and show you how police are dealing with the rogue supporters here.
thank you very much Mike Kagongo for that very comprehensive update but be sure while you're up to speed and trying to cover the latest happenings from the Jacaranda grounds you remain safe as well as your camera person that is Mombi just be sure to remain safe well it is a developing or rather the camera person is um, Marcus Gavi so be sure to remain safe now, it is a developing story and Micah Gwongo will be following up on it and will be updating us further as it develops in our subsequent bulletins. Those are the live pictures coming to you from the Jacaranda grounds where the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition was expected to hold its um, campaigns at the same grounds while at the same time Azimio Lomoja's um, um, candidate of, for the Embakasi East constituency, that is um, Babo Wino. He said to have already um, booked the grounds to ho also hold his campaign. So that is why there is a standoff between the supporters of the Kenya Kwanza Coalition and the Azimio Lomoja Kenya Kwanza Coalition. But moving on, the first female gubernatorial candidate in Lamo County, Omar Omar, has launched a campaign while traversing all corners of the vast county to garner support for her election bid on August 9th. Speaking during a rally, Umar has promised to invest in building the county's economy through the untapped natural resources as well as universal health care to ensure that all residents have access to proper health care. The governor hopeful added that her administration will also end ethnic and religious discrimination, urging that, uh, the locals to avoid being used by greedy politicians who want to enrich themselves. I think Yes. Elimu ni uhai si uhai. Afya ni uhai si uhai. Ni uhai. Haki ya mashamba yetu je? Ni uhai. Na mazingira kwa hivyo tumeelewana kwa uhai wa watu wa Lamu ndio nguzo ya kwanza yes. katika hii kampeni ya Umra Ndegwa. Sawa? Mm. Mm. Tuendelee tufuatilie masala ya uchumi. Vijana muko? Yes. Musikubali kubebwa ovyo. Mshikubali kubebwa tunataka makazi tunataka makazi hapa Lamu County na je kama hatuna viwanda makazi tunayo hakuna kuna poti inafunguliwa sasa hivi yes. na kutakuwa mizigo inakuja ikirudi lakini kama hatuchungi na kura ya mwezi ujao huu wa nane zile kazi zitatupita huku zikienda wapi kule so tunataka viwanda hapa Lamu County a bittersweet political relationship between the Deputy President William Ruto and former Naivasha legislator John Kihagi will soon surface again if the latter wins. Kihagi says the DP will have to explain to Naivasha residents the credibility of the contested UDA primaries. Our reporter Willie Dennis Njiro with the details. Speaking during the inaugural ceremony for his campaign bid at Kenamba Primary School in Naivasha, the former Naivasha legislator John Karanja Kehagi said if he wins the coming elections, he will force Ruto to answer for what he called shambolic party primaries that overturned his win by a single vote. I will face him and I will tell him because even now I will give you my vote, Your Excellency. Now what we are going to pay a vote. But one day I'll ask you, and you'll come here in this field, and you'll explain to these people what happened. Kiage, who is vying for the Naivasha parliamentary seat, had initially been declared the winner in the UDA primaries by 403 votes, and the win was later awarded to the incumbent MP Jane Kihara, who is amongst a list of eight contestants. To Rishinda, Nakura Ikaesabiwa, Mpaka Zatavike to Kapewa, Lakini Kuna Miereka Irichezwa. Mara wakasema tumeshindwa na kura moja na tulikuwa tumeshinda na kura 300 na tatu. Kihagi has publicly declared his stand on his presidential choice and asked the cosmopolitan fragile region to foster peace ahead of the general elections sentiments echoed by a dozen of clergy. Chama kiezi kakuja hapa kuhudhuria sherehe chama kisaidiangi mtu chama tuni daraja ama kama zile gari mnaona pale tunahitaji viongozi lakini si wanasiasa asante ili tunapoingia hapa tuweze kusonga bari na tupeleke yeah. nchi yetu bari the clergy however castigated the head of state for predicaments befalling the country and the high cost of living citing bad leadership ni vibaya sana kiongozi kuendelea kunawili na watu wake wanazidi kuwa masikini 
huo sio uongozi. Naivasha has Nakuru County's biggest swing vote with over 400,000 registered voters. Reporting for TV 47 from Naivasha Nakuru County, I'm Willie Dennis Njiru. Well, thank you, Willie Dennis Njiru, for that report. Now, the increase in indiscipline and depression cases among children in Kilifi County has been attributed to neglect by parents. This is according to Rachel Musioki, the County Executive Committee member for education in the county. It is reported that most affected group is school-going children who mostly suffer depression due to parents failing to take critical care of them, which in some instances has led to suicide. Musioki was speaking during the issuance of 1.5 million shilling school fee bursary from the George Kithi Foundation at Mkwajuni Polytechnic Grounds at Takaungu area in Kilifi North Sub-County where she called on parents to change the way they treat their children. On the other hand, the patron of the foundation, George Kithi, said that poverty was a contributing factor in the school dropout, in discipline and poor performance in examinations. Ndiyo watoto wako mbali pengine lakini tunaweza kupiga simu kutaka kujua mtoto anaendelea vipi si ndio na tunawaomba wakati mtoto amefunga shule amekuja nyumbani kizazi tulichonacho sasa ni kizazi cha tofauti lazima tuongeleshe watoto wetu ukiona mtoto wa jirani ameshikia mzazi wake panga usiseme kwako aliwezi kufanyika generation ya watoto tulio wazaa sasa walio mashule ni generation ya watoto tofauti sisi kama viongozi idara ya elimu tunawaambia tuwaweke watoto wetu karibu wakifunga shule kati na mtoto taka kujua changamoto gani amepitia shule ni vipi utaweza kumuongoza na ukiona mtoto hayuko tayari kuku open, ku open up kwako pengine anaweza kuongea na mama mdogo vizuri pengine anaweza kuongea na baba mdogo vizuri hii itasaidia kwa sababu watoto wanapitia mambo ambayo sisi wazazi hatuyaelewi. Lakini tukiwapatia muda wa kuwaongelesha, watatueleza shida zao na tutaweza kuzitatua. Na hapo tutapunguza depression, idadi ya depression kwa watoto kwa sasa imepanda sana. Every morning nikiamka, mchana na jioni simu zinapigwa na wazazi. Mheshimiwa, mtoto wangu amefukuzwa shule. It is a big problem. Kuna wale wanapiga simu paka wanalia kwa machozi. Hata leo bado ninapigiwa simu ya kwamba mtoto wangu amefukuzwa shule. Ni donda sugu ndani ya kaunti ya Kilifi. Tutawafanyaje watoto hawa wote? Tutawafanyaje? Tutawafanyaje? Suluhisho ni tuingie uongozini wazazi tuwasomeshe. Tuingie uongozini tuwasomeshe. There is no other way. Wazazi wetu hawana pesa. Now, from the report of depression in Kilifi County, let's now head back to right here in Nairobi, where Nairobi Senator uh, Hopeful Johnson Sakaja will this afternoon know his fate when the IEBC dis uh, Disputes Resolution Tribunal rules whether his name will be on the ballot uh, come August 9th. Also awaiting to know their fate is Machakos gubernatorial aspirant Wavinya Ndeti and former governor Mike Mbovisonko. Our reporter Apollo Kamau now joins us live from the Milimani Law Courts. Good afternoon, Apollo. Kindly bring us up to speed. Good afternoon, Dennis, from the Milimani Law Courts, where it's D Day for Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja, who is awaiting a crucial decision to know whether his name will be on the ballot or not when the IEBC Disputes Resolution Tribunal sits. Um, information that we have as of this moment, um, our former chief executive in, Nairobi, in Kiambu County, Karungo Dangwa, Karungo Dangwa's case, has been dismissed. And also there have been some changes uh, from a Nairobi governor, Mike Sonko's case, uh, has been pushed to tomorrow. That's when he will know uh, his fate. As we speak, um, Machako's gubernatorial aspirant, uh, Wavinia Deti's case is underway. Uh, we do expect a ruling. Remember, it was set for today. <clears throat> and for Senator Sakaja, remember, there has been a lot of drama this week. Uh, 
first starting with a complaint before the tribunal challenging the credibility of his papers. Uh, police have now joined in. They want to probe the case, uh, not just Akaja, but also Wavinia and Deti. Um, and also he is expected to present all the required documents on Monday before the Commission for University Education. But just before we go in for the Wavinia Deti's uh, ruling, uh, let's uh, now join one of the aspirants here who was uh, who also had a case here at the Milimani Law Courts, um, which uh, he says was uh, an issue of technicality. Uh, kindly introduce yourself, sir. Who are you and what case did you have here? My name is Bernard Macau. I'm running in Nairobi as an independent uh, candidate for the Senate uh, seat for the county of Nairobi. Yes, and... Um, a few days ago, I, I was here. I had appealed to the Dispute Resolution Committee. My case was rather straightforward because what happened is when I presented my documentation to the returning officer on the date that I was supposed to do so, everything went well except that uh, there is a soft copy of uh, supporters' signatures that was required and his system, the computer system, was not able to upload or to read that, uh, that document. And uh, my arrow in Nairobi was very supportive, Mr. Gogo, um, but his hands were tied because the law required that by the end of a certain period, uh, if, I've, if we have not f finished that process, then uh, I, I would not qualify. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, re required then to appeal here, which I did, and uh, the court three um, had my case, and I thank God because they were fair, they allowed me to go back to the arrow and finish that process. And I did so uh, on Wednesday, and I have been uh, uh, fully processed uh, as a candidate for the seat in Nairobi. A quick one. What, what do you think of the cases uh, before this uh, disputes tribunal? Because there are so many, and what does it say about this election? Well, uh, I, I think the cases are a reflection of our society, the levels of honesty, uh, integrity, uh, and uh, to be honest, some of those cases, uh, they, they, they moved my heart in disappointment. Because w when somebody knows clearly that he was in error, yeah, you, did not, you did not have, for example, the prerequisite number of supporters and their ID, and their ID uh, photocopies with you. Then you lodge a case here uh, saying that uh, it was unfair. I think there uh, you're being dishonest. But uh, nonetheless, the, the, the committee has worked very hard, in my opinion. Uh, I think uh, as of yesterday they had done almost 160-something cases of, of the 260-something. Um, I, I think they are looking at each case on its merits. And I have had a, a, a lot of colleagues, if I can call them colleagues, people who are running as I am running, uh, have their cases had and uh, positive, uh, you know, they have, they have, the, the committee has sided with them and sent them back into the process. At the same time, the committee is trying to weed out. We, we had, I had, a, I, I can't name the person, but one person stood up and said he had three uh, resignation letters from the government and himself confessed that two of them were fake in front of the committee. When, when you have a situation like that, it, it's rather sad and it, it then re makes it even more difficult for the honest cases to, to be listened to because it looks like everybody is trying to lie. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for your comments. Um, information uh, that we have also received is Karungo Dangwa will also be coming to address the media uh, following the dismissal of his case. Back to you, Dennis. Well, thank you very much, Apollo Kamau, for that comprehensive update. Of course, Apollo will be following up with the story and will be updating as far as it develops in our subsequent bulletins. Now, up to that note, that is all we had prepared for your news this afternoon. But remember.